All right, the three types of tree substitution that we're going to use are if we have integrals in the form of the square root of a squared minus u squared, we'll use the substitution u equals a sine theta. If we have integrals in the form of the square root of a squared plus u squared, we'll use u equals a tangent theta. And if we have integrals in the form of u squared minus a squared, then we can use the substitution u equals a secant theta. And so what that's going to allow us to do is to be able to integrate something that normally we couldn't. Um, with each one of these, we have a u, and we have to figure out what du is equal to as well. Because we're, not only we have to plug our u back into our integrand, we're going to have to plug in whatever our du is equal to back into our integrand. All right, so let's take a look at, I guess, u equals a sine theta, one that's in that form. All right, so for example, let's say I have the integral of dx over x squared times the square root of 9 minus x squared. So you see none of the, the basic integration rules that we have covered co will help us integrate that. There's no u and du. Um, we have a product in the denominator and any which way you try to spin that it doesn't fit a formula that we've covered so far. It looks kind of similar maybe to an inverse sine or an inverse secant or something like that, but it won't fit the formulas. So what you need to notice if it will not fit any other formula is that there is a square root of a constant minus x squared somewhere in the problem. And so we have that, that square root of 9 minus x squared here. And that's the key that you would use um, the trig substitution that we're going to use. That is in the form the square root of a squared plus, no, a squared minus u squared. Alright, where a squared is 9 and u squared is x. So we're going to use the trig substitution u equals a sine theta. So our u in our problem is x, right? Because u squared is equal to x squared. So this is x equals our a is 3 because a squared is equal to 9. Then just bring down sine theta. So I have x equals 3 sine theta. So that's the substitution that we're going to use uh, for every x. We're going to plug in a 3 sine theta in the problem. Now, to find dx, the derivative of x, simply take the derivative of 3 sine theta. So that would be 3 cosine theta. So where we have a dx in the problem, we're going to plug in 3 cosine theta. Where we have an x in the problem, we're going to plug in 3 sine theta. So take a second to carefully plug those in. And I say carefully because you do have to square those in some places. And, and don't factor anything. Um, just plug those in and see what you get. I'll give you uh, a, about a minute to do that real quick. we should have the integral of 3 cosine theta and with this dx I did not put d theta but when you take the derivative of this theta you do have a d theta at the end so it's going to be 3 cosine theta d theta over and when I plug in 3 sine of theta for x squared that's going to be 9 <coughs> sine squared theta
times the square root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. All right. Now, under the radical, you can factor a 9 out. Um, and you can factor that under the radical. And also, you can cancel out between this 3 and this 9 here. Right? That'll be a 3 there. So, that leaves me with the integral of, I have cosine of theta over 3 times the square root of 9 times 1 minus sine squared theta, d theta. And so you see by factoring a 9 out under the radical, I can now plug in for 1 minus sine squared theta, I can plug in using the Pythagorean identity. Why did you lose the sign? Oh, the sign didn't disappear. Sorry. It's in front. So I can plug in what, though, for 1 minus sine squared? Cosine squared theta. Okay? And the reason that I would want to do that is because now look what's under the radical. The square root of 9 times cosine squared. And that's something that we can actually take the square root of, right? Because it's a product. So you can take the square root of the first number and take the square root of the second no or the second value. So what would the square root of 9 cosine squared theta be? That's right, it'd be 3 cosine theta. And these are all products down here in the denominator. So when you plug in using the Pythagorean identity here, you'll be able to take the square root. You'll actually be able to do that on all of the, the different types of substitution that we do in this section. U equals A sine theta, U equals A tangent theta, and U equals A secant theta. You can do this. Whenever you get down to this step, it's going to be something you can factor and plug in a Pythagorean identity. That's one of the reasons why we use the substitution that we do. Okay? So now, what will cancel out? Yeah, this cosine and this cosine cancel out. And so we're left with the integral of 1 d theta over 9 <coughs> sine squared theta. Now we can't integrate this the way that it's written because the sine squared's in the denominator. But if we move the sine squared to the numerator and move the constant out, I would have 1 ninth times the integral of cosecant squared theta, d theta. Okay? And we can take the integral of cosecant squared theta. Because there is something that if you take the derivative, you get negative cosecant squared. Right? That's what? Cotangent. So the integral of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. So this is going to be equal to 1 ninth, actually negative 1 ninth cotangent theta plus C. Now there is a problem with leaving our answer like this. Compare your answer that you got to what we started off integrating. I want you to compare those two really quick. With all or most of the integrals we've done in here so far, <clears throat> when you get an answer, you're always able to take the derivative of that answer and, and check that by checking your integrand that you started with. But on this one, you can't because we changed a problem from algebraic form over to a trigonometric form using a substitution. And so what we have to do now is we have to change it back to an algebraic form. And the way that we would do that is by using a right triangle. 
All right, and we're going to use this on all these substitutions. We make a trig substitution. The trig actually makes the integral easier, believe it or not. Then we, we find an answer in terms of trig. And at the very end, we go back and we set up a triangle that would represent the substitution that we made. So look at the original substitution that we made. What was the substitution? x equals 3 sine theta. So we're going to use x equals 3 sine theta to help us draw a right triangle. All right, so here's my right triangle. Now, if we use x equals 3 sine theta to help us set this triangle up, we're going to have to call theta one of the angles. I'm going to make theta this angle here. All right, and we're using x equals 3 sine theta. So what is sine theta equal to if I solve for sine theta in this? What would I get? I get sine of theta equals x over 3. And with right triangle trigonometry, sine is equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So from this angle measure theta, the opposite side is here. So x is what's in the numerator. So opposite is x. Hypotenuse is 3. Now, there's a couple of ways you could find this side down here. However, the way that all this stuff works out, the way that we use the substitution that we do, this side down here will always be this radical that we used to do the substitution. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for that side if you want to, but as a shortcut, you can go back and use this radical here, the square root of 9 minus x squared. Whether you use the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out or you just use the radical, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so now our answer was negative one ninth cotangent theta plus c. So I need to figure out what cotangent of theta would be if this is theta. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite, right? So which angle is adjacent to theta? The square root of 9 minus x squared. All right, so this constant that was in front, it stays in front, negative one ninth times, then cotangent, again, is adjacent over opposite. So that's going to be the square root of 9 minus x squared over the opposite side is x plus c. So our answer is negative square root of 9 minus x squared over 9x plus c. All right, so that was a problem that involved the substitution u equals a sine theta. And the reason that we knew to use that substitution is because the integral did not fit any of our basic integration rules. And it had a square root of 9 minus x squared in it. All right. Now I'm going to look at a problem that would involve the trig substitution u equals a tangent theta. So look back at your notes where you copy down those formulas and see what type of uh, radical we're looking for. Alright, so we're looking for the square root of u squared 
plus a squared, right? We're looking for the square root of u squared plus a squared. So if you look at this, this integral does not fit any other formulas that we've covered to integrate. You could try to let what's under your radical be your u, but you wouldn't have your du. You know, it's not by parts. It's not just a regular trig integral. It's not an inverse trig integral. So what you can do if you, real, if you recognize that it's in that form is we can use the trig substitution u equals a tangent theta. So what is our u? So be very careful here. This right here is our u squared. So 4x squared is equal to u squared. So what would u be equal to? 2x. So notice it's not just x, it's 2x, because 2x times 2x is 4x squared. So I have 2x equals, my a is 1 tangent theta. Okay, so that's what, that, this is the substitution I'm going to use, but I don't want to leave it like this because it's not solved for x. So x is actually equal to what? If I solve for x here, I'd get 1 half tangent theta. Right? Because you divide both sides by 2. So what would your dx be equal to? One half secant squared theta, right? So now I want you to plug your x in and plug your dx in. So when I plug in my dx, I have one half secant squared theta. And then whenever I plug in my x here, I'm going to have 4 times, and then that's going to be 1 half tangent theta squared, and then plus 1. And even though, again, I didn't write it, there's a d theta there when you take the derivative of that theta. So you do have a d theta there. All right, so... We need to square that first, and then we'll say it times 4. So it's going to be the integral of 1 half secant squared theta over, that's going to be the square root of 4 times 1 fourth tangent squared theta plus 1. You can go ahead and write this 1 half that's in the numerator on the outside, like that. Now, when I say 4 times 1 fourth, under the radical, I'm just going to have tangent squared theta plus 1. It's funny how that canceled out like it had to cancel out. And that's because we're using this type of substitution on this problem so that we can get down to this actual form right here under the radical. We want to get this. This right here is special to us. It's part of a Pythagorean identity. There is a Pythagorean identity that says tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So what's under the radical here actually will change to secant squared theta. And that's what we want. We want something we can take the square root of. If you can't take the square root of whatever you have under the radical when you get down to this step, then we didn't use the right trig substitution or we messed up along the way somewhere. It has to work out like this because that's the way we're setting the problem up to work out. All right, so in the numerator, I have secant squared theta. What am I going to be left with in the denominator? When you take the square root of secant squared, you're just going to have secant. Okay. And so secant squared theta divided by secant, that's going to get rid of one of those, right? So we're going to have the integral of, we have 1 half times the integral of secant theta d theta. All 
All right, so that's one half. Now, what's the integral of secant theta? Natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. All right, so we've gotten an answer now in terms of trig. But we started out with algebra. We started out with, um, you know, x's and dx's. And that's how we want to end this problem with x values. So we need to come over to the side, and we're going to make a right triangle. All right. So in this triangle, we got to call one side theta. So let's call this side theta. Look back at the original substitution that we used. We used 2x equals 1 tangent theta. And the reason why I'm using that one, that's the one we started out with. So we want to get the tangent theta by itself. I know you usually don't write this one, so you don't even really have to think of that one as being there. But you do need to think of this side as 2x over 1 because you need the whole opposite and adjacent there. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side here is 2x. The adjacent side here is 1. What is this hypotenuse going to equal? We'll either use the Pythagorean identity or... Remember, we can just use the radical of 4x squared plus 1, square root of 4x squared plus 1. All right, so we need to figure out what the secant of this angle is for our answer and what the tangent, which we already know, the tangent is of theta for our answer. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Right, that's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the square root of 4x squared plus 1 over 1. So just the square root of 4x squared plus 1. Notice I leave my natural log in front. I leave my 1 half in front. All I'm plugging in for is the secant. Plus... What was tangent of theta equal to? 2x. So 2x. Now remember, there is an absolute value there. That absolute value stays plus c. Let's look at the last type of trig substitution. Let me find this one. It needs to be in what form? The square root of u squared minus a squared. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is a um, u equals a secant theta substitution. The integral of x cubed over the square root of x squared minus 25 dx. Alright, and so if you start trying to do our basic integration rules, you'll see none of those apply. 
no U's and DU's that you could come up with to help you integrate that. But we do have a radical. We have a, a square root of x squared minus 25. So that is in the form square root of u squared minus a squared. All right. So our substitution is going to be x equals, what's our a? 5 secant theta. All right, so let's make that substitution. Um, well, we need to find our dx as well. What is our dx? 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. We can't forget the dx. I've worked a problem out and forgot the dx, and then, of course, I got the wrong answer at the end. So you do have to remember to plug in for the dx. That's something we're not used to doing, not used to plugging in trig functions for a dx anyway. All right. Let's see, if I plug in for x there, I have the integral of 5 to the third power is 125 secant cubed theta over, and now I'm going to go ahead and plug my dx in. That's going to be times 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. That's going to be over the square root of and when I plug this x in there and square it, that's going to be 25 secant squared theta minus 25. All right. So this is going to be the integral of 125 secant to the fourth theta. Well, I guess I can go ahead and put that other 5 in there. So that's going to be... 625 secant to the fourth theta tangent theta d theta over now what do I do under this radical here let's see I can factor a 25 out so that would leave me with secant squared theta minus 1 that's a Pythagorean identity if you take the identity we used on the last problem, 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta, and you move the 1 over, you have tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. So here where I have secant squared theta minus 1, I'm going to plug in a tangent squared theta. So I have the square root of 25 tangent squared theta. All right. Whenever I take this square root, of course, that's going to be 5 tangent theta. So I have the integral of 625 secant to the fourth theta tangent theta d theta over 5 tangent theta. The tangent thetas cancel out. The 5 cancels out there and leaves me with a 125. So this is going to be 125 times the integral of secant to the fourth theta d theta. All right, so this is one of those integrals from the last section where I have um, secant by itself, I believe. So is there anything you can think of, maybe, any way to break this up using, using one of those formulas? Um, well, we don't have a power reducing formula for secant. Um, the, the first thing I would probably try is I would probably try to make this secant squared theta times secant squared theta, like this right here is secant squared theta, secant squared theta, and then plug in for one of these, plug in 1 plus tangent squared theta. 1 plus tangent squared theta. 
Now, if I do that, then I'll still have, I'll have the, whenever I distribute that back in, see I have 125 times the integral of secant squared theta plus secant squared theta tangent squared theta. So that's going to be 125 times the integral of secant squared is what? That's right, tangent. There's the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now this one here, this is a u and du. Because if I let u equal tangent theta, what's my du equal to? Secant squared theta. And it's out beside it right here. So on the second integral, I'm really just integrating u squared. Right? So this is going to be plus u cubed over 3 plus c. So now plug back in for your u. So this is 125 times tangent theta plus tangent cubed theta, right, when I plug that back in, over 3 plus c. Now, we're not done yet. Because we don't want our answer left in terms of trig. We started out with algebra. So we need to set up a right triangle. And let's look at the original substitution that we made. The original substitution was x equals 5 secant theta. So that's what we're going to use down here on our triangle x equals 5 secant theta. So secant theta equals x over 5 if you divide both sides by 5. Let's make one of these angles theta. Let's make that one theta. Remember secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, so hypotenuse is x over the adjacent side is 5. So this side over here is going to have to be the square root of, what was it, x squared minus 25. All right, so now let's, what do we need in our problem to get our answer? We need tangent theta. So the tangent is what? Opposite over adjacent. So tangent theta is going to be the square root of x squared minus 25 over 5. So that's what I need to plug back in. So I have 125 times the square root of x squared minus 25 over 5 plus... Now here I have one-third, so that's one-third times, this is tangent cubed, so I have to take this answer here and cube it. I have to raise it to the third power. So I need to do that to the numerator and the denominator. All right. So... If we had a square root up top and we cube that, that's going to take that and make it x squared plus 25 to the 3 halves power. Because power to a power, you just multiply. And then my denominator is going to be, when you cube 5, you get 125. So now what you want to do is you want to distribute your 125 in. All right, when you do that, you're going to get 25 square roots of x squared minus 25. And then when we, when we say that times the second number, the 125s are going to cancel out. So you get plus x squared plus 25 to the 3 halves power over 3. 
plus C. Yeah, that is a minus. I don't know why it changed to a plus there. So that's a minus there and a minus there. Now, um, we don't have to have square roots in order to, to use these substitutions. We, because if, even if we have something raised to like the 3 halves power, that's still a square root, right? 3 halves power is just the square root cubed. So if we have a problem, say like this, integral of dx over x squared plus 1 raised to the 3 halves power. So remember, this is still a square root. It's just the square root cube down here. Okay? So it, that is the square root of x squared plus 1 cubed. So we figure out what type of substitution is u squared plus a squared. That's the tangent one, right? So my substitution is a, I'm sorry, u equals a tangent theta. So I'm going to have x equals 1 tangent theta. So what is my dx here? dx is just going to be secant squared theta d theta. So now plug this back in, plug the dx in, plug the x in. So I have the integral of, and I plug the dx in, that's going to be secant squared theta d theta over, now remember that's a square root cubed. So that's the way you want to think about that, square root cubed. So whenever I plug in the x, I'm going to have the square root of, it's going to be tangent squared plus 1 cubed. And what can I plug in for tangent squared theta plus 1? secant squared theta. So what's the square root of secant squared theta? What's the square root of secant squared theta? Just secant theta, right? But then it's cubed. So you have secant. When you take the square root, it's secant to the first theta. But then you have to cube it, so it's secant cubed theta. Alright, so this is, when you cancel out, you get 1 over secant theta. Can you integrate that? No, you have to bring the secant theta to the numerator, so this is the integral of cosine theta. Can you integrate that? I hope so. That's just equal to sine theta plus c. Okay, so now let's go back to the substitution that we used, x equals 1 tangent theta, and make a right triangle. Alright, so here's our right triangle. Here's theta. So tangent of theta is 
and if you want to you don't think about the one in front here think about the one down here so tangent is opposite <coughs> over adjacent so x here one here now what do you think goes here the square root of x squared plus one all right so what is sine equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse so it's going to be x over the square root of x squared plus 1 plus c. Now, just for quick reference, if you ever run into an integral and the square root is in the numerator, and it's just the square root. It can be worked out like this, but the integrals get to be kind of tough. So we actually have special formulas that you can use. It's preferred that you use these formulas if you have just the square root of a squared minus u squared with nothing else, and it's in the numerator, or the square root of u squared minus a squared, or the square root of u squared plus a squared. So several times in the semester in Calculus 3 and Calculus 4, you'll run into integrals like this and instead of using the substitution you can just use these formulas and these formulas are found in your ebook um, in this section on trig substitution <laughs>